Hello and welcome to this video on how to switch libraries. I'm recording now on the um, PC, so this is uh, the Windows version, but the principles that I'm presenting are the same for the Mac version. So if you happen to have a Mac, you might still watch and then uh, look for the mouse clicks um, on your Mac. So what you see here now are all my projects and I actually now want to switch to a new empty library. So I have a new project and for that I actually want to work with a completely different library so I don't see all these other projects um, here that that have nothing to do with my, with my new uh, research project. So what you see also here um, is a representation of what a project is. So basically it is a, a container that contains all of your documents. And so we have the Atlas um, project file that stores um, all your coding, your memos, networks, your create everything else that you do are to your data but of course it doesn't make sense if it wouldn't be linked to your document so the project container is your project file plus your documents all of this is now within the atlas environment and that is stored um, in a hidden location so your data cannot be lost so atlas can take care of your data and you cannot actually then accidentally um, destroy the integrity of your project by moving uh, some documents around. So this is the safe and proof um, way of handling data if you're happy with the um, default location that Atlas provides. And let me just um, go to that um, default location. I'm going to the um, uh, search field at the bottom and even though it's a hidden location if you know how to get there um, uh, you can access it and so it's percentage up um, data percentage and then it will bring you um, to the folder on your computer and I'm just moving it um, from my other screen to here into the updated roaming location so and that is always linked to the your own user account and you see all of these other programs um, also use this location to store their data. So the Atlas folder is the scientific software folder. And you see I've been playing around a bit um, here. So I have, this is actually the um, version 7 library, this is a version 8 library, and these are some libraries uh, I've created within that default location. So that's of course something you can also do. You can create another library within that secure updater roaming location where you cannot um, kind of go um, by accident and delete some stuff there. Uh, let me just go into um, a library or oh, there's nothing much in, in it. Let's try this one, yeah. Um, and then you see all of these data files. So that's nothing you need to worry about. That's nothing of your concern. The only thing that should be of your concern that you don't um, fill around with this, uh, this with those data in it, um, or change any of these um, um, uh, folder names or file names. Yeah, these are all the IDs for your documents that that Atlas needs to identify um, your projects and also your documents. So that's why it's hidden in the first place. So um, nothing can happen to your project. But of course, this default location is not always useful um, for for everyone, and some people are not allowed to work on the C drive. This is where this default location is located under your username. So some uh, people have to work on the server um, or behind a firewall because they um, have uh, data that they need to protect that are um, that they need to keep keep secure, and the C drive. Um, is not a place for them to work. So that's why in this version 8.1 Atlas now um, offers the possibility to move the library. And this is now the entire container that contains your project files, but also your 
document. So basically kind of what's represented here. Yeah, so the whole um, container. So how do you do that? You go to options and then you have an option here to which library. So I'm now in the default library where I want to move to a different one. So you have three choices. You can open an existing library. You can move the library to a completely different location. So if I wanted to move all of my projects to a different location, or I can create a new empty library. This is now what I want to do um, because I just want to have a clean sheet uh, when I start a new project. So let's assume that would be my reason. So I select this option, I click on next, and now I'm choosing a location and I actually already prepared um, a location on my D drive data and now I prepared something for a check called team projects and the Atlas call it Atlas library the name doesn't matter you can also call it Atlas library do not touch some people do that in order to I tell people please don't go into this folder this is solely for Atlas TI so I select this location and Atlas does make me aware that um, other people can potentially access that location, so it's my responsibility to protect it. But let, let's do something else now. Um, I choose uh, a location on my OneDrive, which is a cloud location, so I'm just using my Atlas folder here. And now Atlas actually tells me the chosen directory is located on a cloud sharing service, Microsoft OneDrive. Please choose a different empty directory for the new library. So I'm not allowed to create the library on a cloud sharing service. The reason is that if it's in the cloud somewhere, and the idea is that different computers can actually access that cloud depending on where I'm sitting, when I'm sitting in this office or I have another office or I have a laptop and desktop, and no matter where I are and I have an internet connection, I can access it. Then Atlas is not in charge any longer of um, administering and managing that library and things may get messed up and this is what you don't want and this is why Atlas is not allowing you to choose a cloud sharing service. So let's get back to my D drive which is that other part, it's local. Yeah, so it's still um, on my D drive, but it's not shared on the cloud. Oh, I wanted to have it that one I wanted. Yeah. So within that Atlas library folder that I've created, Atlas will also create the subfolders you have been seeing. So Atlas does all of that um, automatically. So now it tells me where it is. So please do remember where you have your libraries. Yeah, because if you have multiple libraries which is now possible that you can have that you know where they are and that you also back up those library this is your project data and that's important and if you have a routine backup make sure it does include the past where you have your atlas library so now i have created a new library so Atlas now took a bit to change the location but then it opens up automatically again so now it's all clean and I can start creating a new project this is one last thing so you see what um, has been happening um, I go back to this Atlas library and here you see it has started to create its own folders here. So it's empty now because I haven't created any project, but it will fill this life once I now actually go and create a new project. So it's easy enough to do, but just uh, take those two things um, or keep those things in mind that um, you cannot use a cloud sharing uh, service and that you please back up um, the library location. Now actually I want to go back to my 
default location. And so I open an existing library and here I'd, actually I don't have to remember yeah if, if you can always automatically go back to the default library location while you choose any other location that you have um, selected. So now it's closing and opening up again so I go back to where I was before with all my projects. So you see if you switch the library location everything else is still there um, and you can switch back and forth between different libraries. What I want to show you, and also as a safeguard, of course, um, in case ha something happens to li your library, if you regularly export your projects and this is how you do it, you just go click on file and export yeah, and you export your project bundle file. Then you always have a backup of your project which is independent of this Atlas environment and even something happens to whatever drive you choose um, where you have your Atlas library, for some reason it is broken, it is lost, it is damaged, um, you never know what happens. And if you export your project then um, you are on the safe side. So, well, let me export it now just to this location. So what you see now, this is also new if you have been uh, already using version 8. If I'm exporting a project, Atlas automatically adds my username and the date when I'm exporting it. Which I think it's also useful for your own personal reason that you know when you export a project so you have like a um, an audit trail of the various versions um, um, of your project, um, but it's also uh, improving the workflow for team projects. So now you see the um, yeah the name of the project, the author or the currently logged in user, the date and the Atl proj yeah pro how do you pronounce that? But that means Atl project project here the uh, extension, and um, you see also um, here some other versions. And now I click on save and <clears throat> and now I exported the project and I have now a save copy um, somewhere else. The project bundle files can be stored and shared via the cloud. That you can move onto the OneDrive or Google Drive or wherever and can either send it to yourself or have it there as backup or send it uh, to other people for downloading it. So that's fine. The um, the backup, yeah, just to go there again. If you export a project, that's your backup, and that can be um, on a cloud sharing device. Hope you found this helpful, and see you again.